from Shakespeare in New York to Portland, Oregon. And a stellar performance of a very different sort. Lee Cowan beams us there. Portland, Oregon, nestled in the evergreen shadow of Mount Hood, is a place that prides itself on being a little different. So perhaps the bright blue aliens, along with the pig people we found inhabiting a Portland park, fit right in. Look strange? Well, actually, they look very familiar to those who recognize that slightly crooked eyebrow or a particularly pointed ear. Ring a bell yet? Don't worry. This probably will. That's the soundtrack to Trek in the Park, as in Star Trek, performed in the park. Space, the final frontier. Shakespeare's got nothing on Captain Kirk. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's five-year mission. To explore strange new worlds. To seek out new life and new civilizations. No one has attempted putting Gene Roddenberry's sci-fi classic onto the stage quite like this. Mr. Spock, full analysis of sensor readings. I want to know who that intruder is. I want to know who that intruder is. We made yeah. the agreement that if it, if it didn't work, we're moving out of Portland. <laughs> <laughs> we're running for the hills if this doesn't work. It's the creation of Adam and Amy yeah. Roscoe, a brother and sister theater team who started Trek in the Park four years ago. Vulcan honors us with your presence. We come to serve. To see if they could take 40-year-old TV scripts and turn them into live theater. Their latest episode, Journey to Babel, originally looked like this. Mr. Spark, we'll leave orbit in two hours. Would you care to beam down and visit your parents? Captain, Ambassador Sarek and his wife are my parents. Trek in the Park's interpretation is faithful to almost every word. Ambassador Sarek and his wife are my parents. Everything about it still resonates. The stories are still good. They're still, yeah, campy, but that's part of why we love it. You call us thieves! Gentlemen. This earthbound enterprise is crewed mostly by Adam's longtime theater buddies. What about the Klingons? I think it's unlikely it is one of theirs. At the time, we were roommates, and he came to me and he said, so I have this idea. Now stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right. And he says, we're going to do Star Trek in the park. <laughs> OK. Jesse Graff was skeptical at first, but the part of Spock was just too good to pass up. Fascinating. 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 <laughs> you even got the eyebrow twitch. No one takes themselves too seriously here. But boldly going where no theater project has gone before takes a lot of work. Nice. There are months of writing and weeks of rehearsals and choreography. After all, Captain Kirk's over-the-top fight scenes, they don't just happen. Can we run that again? Every cast member takes the script seriously, almost like literature. Just ask Paul Pisty, who plays Dr. McCoy. Dress uniform, spit and polish. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to stand this. Uh, you can't come out here and make a mockery of it, or people are not going to receive it as well. You have to respect your source material. There is the obvious downside to all this, something any closet Trekkie fears, being mercilessly mocked. There's name calling or whatever, but like you can't take that personally or anything. Like, what do they say? Pathetic geeks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is a labor of love. Admission is free. They don't get paid. In fact, they dig into their own pockets to keep the production going. It's so famously low budget, those seats on the bridge are actually someone's kitchen chairs. And guess who makes the costumes? Spock. Spock and more Spock. Captain Kirk's mom. We do have a rip once in a while. I'm here to sew it back up again. <laughs> like a good mother. <laughs> That's what mothers are for. <laughs> Marge Roscoe is a Trekkie through and through. She even has the tattoo to prove it. 
It's the Star Trek costume yes. designer's yes, mark. It is. <laughs> if that alien vessel starts transmitting again, I want to know who on board the Enterprise is receiving. What's it like watching your son play Captain Kirk? You want me to cry? <laughs> the accolades have reached all the way to City Hall. Last year, Portland's mayor declared Star Trek in the Park Month. Live long and prosper. Are you surprised at how big it's become? How much of a thing it is now? Oh, I'm blown away. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, in our first year, I was expecting top out at 200. They now get close to 1,000 at every performance. So popular, they had to find a bigger park. More grass for the faithful. It's gleeful. Yeah. It is pure and loving and uh, absolutely sincere. And that's what makes it terrific. Captain Kirk's original five-year mission was to seek out new life and new civilizations. Turns out, all he really had to do was come to a Portland park to find it. The story from our Lee Cowan.